Hey yo, is that Athena in this episode? What the heck? Okay, so we got a lot to cover, so let's just jump into the chapter itself first and then the rest. Going from the trailer to the season 2 recap to this chapter 106, I love that the establishing shots that we got when we came back to the factory is filled with these red lines on the tops of panels. It creates a lot of cohesion as we're still trying to connect the dots. All the different forms of content that we got bombarded by over the last five or so days leading up to release of season three. So seeing these kinds of red lines as well as the lines of the murder board that uh, the recap has also, it was really cool. Really, really cool to see. And then um, another tie-in is the smoke clearing around Tristan as we hear wind from the first OST kind of reminded me of the brazen Lorne from the beginning of our series in the prologue charging headfirst into a grenade, which turns out to just be smoke as well. How both Sinclairs are blind, as Tristan doesn't really know that it was his own niece that saved them all. Speaking of which, uh, that VA line at the end of the teaser for the trailer was fire. Will's flashback is interesting for a multitude of reasons. It's sandwiched between the same shot of Will looking at the fire and there's the, like I can't tell if the lines are rain or it's just like the flashback like aesthetic for it. Um, also there's this person running in the middle panel that looks exactly like Lauren if it was like a little as her little yellow ribbon isn't shown in Will's perspective unlike how we saw it presented in the season one finale. Also the lighting also the also the lighting is much darker so there's so many potential inconsistencies that I can't come to the proper conclusion that Lauren was there in this particular shot when Will was also at the ATST. It this does confirm that Will was at the ATST, maybe later on since it is a little darker, and potentially seeing the factory fire has distorted his memories of the past, similar to kind of what Kim is going through, but at a much smaller scale. And poor Kim, her little trip was very painful, and I can only imagine it fits so well with the aesthetic nature of the brief recap at the beginning of 106, tying everything in together. So visually perfect. The fact that Kim is taking on the POV of Lauren from the factory arc in these moments and not succeeding in saving Lauren is her form of survivor's guilt that is eating away at her consciousness presently and is going to continue to eat away at it until she sees Lauren again. Now, the distortion via the glitch effect is amazing and it's not only the parts that have the effect but the entire person has been swapped with Lauren for these scenes. Kim, who is so confident in her skills as a markswoman now, torments her because she let her best friend to die. And because she wasn't proactive enough to actually do something about it, this is the outcome of her, uh, not really incompetence, but I guess powerlessness. So we know that the mask is a strong symbol of the APD, as chapter eight points out that when officers wear their masks, they become a full unit and under one symbol to fight the injustice that takes place around Art Hollis. I see a lot of people suggesting that Tristan taking off his police hat is the indication that he will draw from other connections outside the APD to find the truth. And I mean, I want to remind, like, the entire episode, we don't see a single officer mask and we don't really even see it in the end of season two when the officers pulled up. A commitment to the cause has already long been tossed away. The hat is not something new. It's a little symbolic, maybe, but remember with the series, the mask and the covering of the face or adding obscurity to characters is way more important than the fact that Tristan is or is not wearing his official attire as chief of police. But the, uh, the chapter was good. Uh, I got a little emotional. The lighting was good, especially in the hospital. Uh, Shoutouts F, uh, putting herself in there. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, let's move into some of the stuff that was outside of the chapter itself. So like the banner that is uh, being displayed on Webtoons right now is pretty awesome. Really. I think it is a little spoilerly because of the journal headline reading, Loon is dead, but... 
The colors are fantastic, so it's whatever. The trailer and the teaser were also amazing, and if you haven't seen either of them, just go check out So's Insta. Oh, she actually did post on Twitter as well, so go check those out. It's all on there, as well as all the shoutouts that she's made uh, for her editor, who's done amazing work, and the voice actors that worked on the characters for the trailer. Like, it was fantastic. It definitely set the tone and mood going right into season 3, because I assumed that the trailer would be the only thing that we would get when I loaded up the Webtoons app. We also got a recap, which was awesome. I was not expecting it. Speaking of the recap, Ayo, they're lying in there, right? Uh, they only mentioned two of the Pantheon members that we didn't see Riss for, but technically, we have not seen Athena's Riss. Hmm? We have not seen her wrist. We don't know where Athena, if Athena even has the Circus Royale tattoo. Just, just wanted, wanted to throw that out there. Uh, but yeah. The only theory that I have uh, is that Lauren and Kyrian will join the Circus. And that's how they'll end up at the uh, reception ball. And that the messenger that almost yeeted Kim at the end of Season 2 is in fact the one and only Athena. Hence, Athena appearing in this premiere. Um... Whether it will be substantiated or not, we'll find out as the season goes on. I have not read the Fast Pass yet, but I will. My girl definitely needs more screen time, and I am happy and hopeful she'll be getting that spotlight this season. The structure for these videos will change drastically going into season 3, as it will no longer be weekly due to me going to work mainly, But so expect the next video after this batch of Fast Passes becomes public. So... I believe March 28th, 29th is when we'll get your next Purple Hyacinth video. So every every five weeks, I'll talk about that section of chapters. If you're looking for more videos from me about Purple Hyacinth, this one right here on the last trailer that Webtoon put out for the series is a must watch. And I talk about a lot of the aesthetics that they went into that trailer, which was only a minute long, but the video is much longer. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.